Audio is one of my weakest areas of expertise when it comes to Final Cut Pro. And so that is why I was so immensely excited when my friend and fellow YouTuber, Raphael Ludwig, was dropping his Final Cut Pro course. Inside of his course, it has a ton of different modules all dedicated to audio editing inside of Final Cut Pro. And so I asked if he'd be willing to share one of those modules completely for free. He was more than happy to do so and he wanted to hook all of you up with $100 off of his course if you use the discount code down below. So with all of that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and let Raphael show you the only four audio plugins you need to know to make better videos inside of Final Cut Pro. In this lesson, we're gonna be diving deep into the world of audio in Final Cut Pro. We all know that raw sound can sometimes be, well, a little bit messy and raw, but with the right tools, you can shape it into something awesome. It's very much like how an artist uses a brush to color or paint the picture, or how you use the color tools to make the image look great. But here we're gonna be using some cool audio plugins that are built into Final Cut to paint our sound. And the four plugins are the channel EQ, the de the limiter, and compressor. The channel EQ plugin, think of it more like a fancy treble or bass control. Want more punch or brightness in your sound? This is the tool to use. The de this is the go-to for smoothing out the sharp S sounds in voices. No more hissy microphones. The limiter is like a security guard or a bouncer that makes sure that the level doesn't go too crazy and stays within its boundary. The compressor is more like a sound balancer, making sure that the loud parts aren't too loud and the quiet parts are clear enough to hear. So by the end of this lesson, you'll know how to use these plugins and make your audio sound polished and professional. We're gonna start with the channel EQ. Imagine sound as a mix of different frequencies, like the notes of a piano. Some are low, like bass, and some are high, like a whistle. The channel EQ, the EQ which stands for equalizer, lets you adjust these frequencies. So if you're listening back and you think that there's too much bass, you can turn that down. And if you want to add more brightness, then you can turn up the higher frequencies. And if you've ever played with the sound equalizer on a stereo, but it's way more detailed in its nuance. This tool is great for making the audio sound just right. So if you open up the channel EQ and then just press the analyzer, this is all built into Final Cut. But that hasn't stopped Adobe from making huge strides in AI. But that hasn't stopped Adobe from making huge strides with AI in Photoshop, which I go over in this video. How awesome their generative AI and how, but that hasn't stopped Adobe from making, you can actually go in and slice out that frequency that's causing that, that noise. How awesome their generative AI and how, but that hasn't stopped Adobe from making huge strides with AI. And in this, one of the main things that I'd look for, and this is something that was taught by an audio engineer, and it's very, very loose and, and very much per voice. If you wanna go in and kind of fine tune a voice, so after you've done your voice isolation, which, which I go over in this video and show you how awesome, how awesome their generative AI and how, so you wanna look for those frequencies that are just harsh and hard to listen to and cut those like really, really, really fine. So uh, using the channel EQ. So if I play that back, which, which I go over in this video and show you how awesome, how awesome their generative AI and how, but that hasn't stopped Adobe from making huge strides with AI. And in this video, I go over all the awesome things that Photoshop has added with generative AI and Phil with generative fill and AI. The way he described it is like, you're looking for that singing, that humming that is in that frequency. And that's the one, so you bring it all the way up until it's like, oh, it's it's obviously there. It's like, it's harsh, it's not nice. And for each voice, they're gonna be in different places. And for each microphone, it's gonna pick it up a little bit differently. So you're always listening for those. And then you, and then you wanna kind of overall bring up the uh for especially in my voice you have to listen to it so i'm going to bring this down and just play back that that again which which i go over in this video and show you how awesome how awesome their generative ai and how 
But that hasn't stopped Adobe from making huge strides with AI. And in this video, I go over all the awesome things that Photoshop has added with generative AI and fill with generative fill and AI. But that hasn't stopped companies like Adobe from making huge strides with AI. Like in this video where I talk about the, it's a very simplistic workflow, but understanding how to fix those harsh tones is going to make your voice sound better overall. And once you find it for, if you have a, a permanent setup, if you're actually doing a whole show and you want just a rough little cleanup, doing the loudness and noise removal and just balancing those few. If you, you can then save the preset down here, you press save, save your preset and put it into a folder or make a new category. And they can easily just drag it and drop it onto the voice that you're working with, either being yours or being talent that you're working with. And it's, it's about being subtle. It's about, it's about cutting just enough for it to sound a little bit better because those frequencies are going to cut through on different speakers more harshly than they're not. So it's better to reduce them down. First, find them having those frequencies sing at you essentially. And audio is one of those things where it's just like, I need all the help I can get and trying to make it sound better in the edit. And as an editor, it's not really your responsibility and your job and your knowledge base to know how to do a great audio mix and, and cutting. But if you're playing back for an audience or if you're playing back for a director or producers and you have cleaned up a little bit, they'll focus more on the story and the actual content instead of not liking something and not being able to articulate why they don't like something in particular. If you hear it, and you can just do a quick test the way I did it where you, you kind of search around and you find it and then you just balance it out. It's, it's a nice way to make the voice sound a little bit more pleasant for those first few viewing experiences. The next plugin is the de -esser. So if you've ever noticed that how sometimes when people say words with the letter S, it sounds too sharp and hissy, that's called the sibilance. And, it's, and it can be pretty annoying, especially if you're listening to a long podcast or a long form video. And the de -esser plugin is like a sound detective that finds those hard S's and calms them down. It's especially handy when working with dialogue or voiceovers to make sure that everything sounds smooth. And the de in combination with the channel EQ, help balance the sound of different parts of your audio. The de, the de tackles those sharp S sounds and the channel EQ smooths out the rest. So together they help to make sure that the sound is top notch and pleasant to listen to. So if you're listening to this, so you want to leave the thresholds. I like to bump it up. We want the max reduction by 20, de 20 decibels, sure. Uh, and then we're just going to listen to it and see. All these AI tools currently feel so far behind what is available from other companies. But let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to three and now four, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they do, they do it by leaps. So it's not that it's falling behind, it's just they haven't pushed out their latest tech. But Apple is patient. So you're trying to find that frequency that it is set at. You don't want to reduce it by too much because you just want to bring it down so it's comfortable to listen. Like you still want them to be there. You don't want it. But let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to three and now four, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they, they do it by leaps. So it's not that it's falling behind, it's just, and you can click on filter solo. So you're trying to find it. You're trying to find that bounce where, where those are, are punching through higher than everything else when you're, when you have filtering it and you can start seeing those peaks get bigger when you change. So the frequency, when you start going lower, it'll start to affect more and more sounds, but you want to find that nice balance that works for the voice that you're working with. And once you found it and you play it back, let's remember ChatGPT2 compared to three and now four, or even the first iteration of Midjourney and Stable Diffusion to where they all sit now. Apple moves slower, but when they do, so ultimately it just brings down those S's, those sh sh sounds, 
the the sibilance of those higher S's. So if someone, if you find that someone talks with a lot of uh, those kind of sibilance, then you can just use the de to find that balance where it brings it down. You can still hear the, that they're still using those sounds, but it lowers them down into a comfortable listening area. And once you have it sounding nice overall, this is where the limiter and the audio compressor come in. Because when working with sound, it's important to control how loud or quiet parts can be. And this is called the dynamic range of the audio. And, and that's where the limiter and the compressor come in. But they, and they have some things in common, but they are used a little bit differently. Think of the compressor like a volume manager for the sound. It makes sure that the sound doesn't get too loud or stay too quiet. It does this by using settings like threshold, ratio, attack, and release. If a sound gets too loud, the compressor can turn it down a bit. This helps keep the sound even and clear. It's a tool that once you understand it, becomes very powerful in your whole tool set. The threshold gets, any sound louder than the threshold gets the compressor's attention. And when working with raw sounds like a voice recording or dialogue from a camera, you can set this at about minus 20 as a good guideline. The ratio tells the compressor how much we want to turn down the loud sound. If the ratio is two to one, then every two decibels over that threshold, the sound is turned down by one decibel over. The higher the ratio, the more the sound gets turned down. I typically like to keep my ratio between two and three, and sometimes a little bit higher, but that really depends on what was recorded and what the final sound I'm looking for. The attack, it's all about timing. Once the sound goes over the threshold, how quickly should the compressor start working? A fast attack means that the compressor starts almost instantly, while a slower attack lets the loud bit play a little bit before turning it down. Typically, I like to set the attack really fast because I want the sound to be brought down. And finally, the release is really about what happens after the loud sound is done. How long should the compressor keep working before it stops? A fast release means that it stops quickly, while a slow release keeps the volume down a little. I like to set the release a little bit longer because when people are, because with dialogue, you know that the next word is coming soon and you want that quick and not to be bouncing too quickly between turning on and turning off. So again, think of a compressor like a sound bouncer at a club. The threshold is the volume limit the ratio is how strict the bouncer is, the attack is how quickly the bouncer reacts, and the release is how long the bouncer stays alert. And with the right settings, your sound will be in perfect harmony. When I do use a compressor, I typically set the level at which the, the signal will be affected. So I typically like to leave this at about minus 20 because anything below minus 20, I don't want it to be affected. The ratio is, so I, I like to have it around somewhere between three and four. So for every three decibels, it goes over the threshold, over, I want to bring it down to one decibel over the threshold. So depending on the recording, I like the ratio, I like to keep at around between three and four. The makeup is there to bring up the volume again, because if this is set too aggressive, then this will bring that volume back up and then you want to adjust the, the attack so it happens fair, fairly quickly. And then the release, you can leave at 1,000 milliseconds, where, but I like to set it to about 500 milliseconds. You can leave it at 1,000 milliseconds, but I like to set it to about 500 milliseconds. So the effect gets released a little bit quicker. And I definitely want a soft knee. So in this case, I'm gonna bring down, because you can see it here, that I wanna keep it at around six dB as the, the highest level. So this is trying to bring up those lower portions. Apple has been quietly stirring the pot in the world of AI in the most Apple way possible. And their master plan revolves around something that they call the neural engine, a mysterious piece of tech that lives in every single device that they sell today. But what is the neural engine and how could it possibly give Apple the upper hand in the long-term AI race? Well, buckle up. Because in this video, we're going on a journey into the heart of Apple's secret AI strategy, from their dedicated AI chips, their neural engine, 
there are stealthy AI acquisitions, and more. So again, the, the limiter and the compressor try to achieve the very, try to achieve very similar things. They try to limit a signal from going past a certain point and the compressor just tries to bring the dynamics of the whole audio signal a little bit closer together. But again, you still may need to use both of them in conjunction. Like you, it does want to peak. So you can turn on a limiter that is built into the compressor and tell it to limit at minus three. And that should drop that down. So there is a limiter that is built into compressor. So you, uh, so you could use this as a one-stop shop for the entire, for the effect. And it's about finding that balance where it still sounds good. And you wanna make sure that if you do need to raise the output, like if you push it a little bit too hard and now in Final Cut Pro, or, or the original signal isn't messaging that loud, on the Mac, or you even can... Siri in its now seemingly limited capacity, then you have used Apple's AI on device. All these AI tools, all these AI... So you can use the output to raise the gain of the entire signal and even crunch that down a bit more. So the compressor is not the simplest tool to use, but it is, it is powerful for what it does do. And just like the compressor, the limiter is like a stricter version of the compressor. It sets a max volume level and makes sure no sound goes above it. If any sound tries to go over this max level, the limiter quickly turns it down. And this is super useful when you want to make sure that the sound doesn't get too loud and cause distortion or hurt the ears of the listener. And in the video world, it's often used to make sure that you stay within the guidelines to make sure that there is no peaking or distortion within any audio. So it's great when you're delivering to YouTube, to other formats, to other distributions, to make sure that the audio stays within its range. And we have how much gain we want to raise. So we want to raise the lower portions, but at the same time we want to lower and almost like it's hitting a brick wall, hence why it's called brick wall, those higher places. So right now, if I play this back, the CPUs, it is what powers features like. So it's bouncing around between minus 12 and minus six, but then there's moments where it pops up. So I do want to raise the overall volume. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna bring it up a few decibels. So I'm gonna to go to three, cause I want it to get between Six and three is where I want to go. The release is how long it takes to relax before it, it comes out. The output level, I'm gonna drop to minus three because that's kind of, that's where I wanted to limit it to. I'm gonna change it to legacy and then soft knee. That just gives it a, instead of a hard change, it's going to, kind of bend it out and give it a, a soft knee. So if we look back to this section here where there was that pop, so I'm gonna turn it off and you're gonna see this section pop up and these sections come down. So if we look again, those sections start to come down and I can boost this up even more and it's starting to bring up that overall the level. So if you look how, how much higher these are, and, but if we play it back, we should start seeing the reduction part playing as well. Learning in AI applications. This means it can perform these tasks more quickly and efficiently than general purpose CPUs. It is what powers features like Face ID, Siri, and on-device processing. For so this is really useful if, there, if there's too much dynamics in the voice where there's too quiet and then it gets really loud and then too, you want to kind of balance it out where that energy still remains because you don't want to blast this all the way up where, and then it just becomes one level for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone and now in final, you still want to have a little, a bit of dynamics, but if you notice that it's being cut out at minus three, so it's not going above that level, but the waveform has just become this wall of sound. Everything with effects and with sound effects, with visual effects, with anything, it's subtlety is the key. So I'm just gonna drop this back down to about six. So I'm giving it a gain of six decibels. That dynamics of the voice does come back. 
and on-device processing for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone and now in Final Cut, and Pro, now you can see or the predictive text in any messaging app on the Mac or even Siri in its now seemingly limited capacity, then you have used Apple's AI on device. All these AI tools currently feel so you want to find it where it's just the reduction is just bouncing a little bit. So we can probably crank this up a little bit more, but this raises the lower parts of the speech but also make sure that none of none of the higher and stronger portions get too high and start to peak. That's the whole thing that we're trying to do here. What powers features like Face ID, Siri, and on-device processing for applications that need machine learning. If you have ever used the background removal tool on photos on your iPhone. So Limiter is actually a very simple tool, but it's a very powerful tool. It limits how high something can go but you can raise everything up to get to a certain point. So it's about finding that nice balance of what the limiter can do. Now, I know that the limiter and the compressor, they sound like they do the same thing, and both the compressor and limiters deal with controlling how loud sounds can be. But the main differences is how they actually do the work. Com compressors adjust the volume gently, make making sure it's balanced and sounds good. Limiters are more strict and they make sure the sound doesn't go past a certain point. While limiters shape the sound to make it more pleasing, limiters are more about safety and protection. So to sum it up, having the channel EQ, the de compressors and limiters as your main four tool set when working with audio, it's the best way to make sure that your dialogue, your music, your sound effects, all have their own frequencies that they play in. They don't go over certain thresholds or limits and everything just sounds pleasant to everyone listening to it. So knowing how to use them is key for making sure that your sound is its best. Thank you, Raphael, so much for being willing to share this on the channel. If you enjoyed this module of Raphael's course, I strongly recommend you check out the links down below and don't forget to use my discount code so that you can get $100 off. With that being said, thank you so much for stopping by the channel and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.